All right, welcome back to the Jay Grossi podcast. Today we're going to talk about my favorite basketball player, Jay Grossi, or you guys might know him on the wrestling uh, circuit as Glue Man. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. I uh, met him. Uh, he spat in my face after I brought up his uh, failed basketball career and after I brought up Dogman. The, magi- <laughs> the blind magical dog no, magician. No, no, it was a dog the magical dog magician who was, who was uh, who claimed to be blind at the time. <laughs> No, who didn't claim to be? He was blind at the who's time. Blind? Who was partially blind at the time? I mean, aren't dogs partially blind? No, isn't your dog going blind? Maybe. So uh, that's so. That's want to introduce a podcast? All right, guys, welcome to uh, the Tavi Radio podcast. Uh, I'm your host. Tavernello. Tavernello Fascioni, and here I have my co-host Lichen Bones, the Wolf Bone himself. Why are we doing this again? Sorry. Uh, Luke Wood Jones. <laughs> ah! My bad. Bike and Jones, the guy from Guilty Gear. Uh, okay. Well, at least I got the at least I got these sweet tits now. So. God dang it! She wasn't this bad in in like the original games, right? Well, no, nah, she, she was big, but like not. Uh, but it, it wasn't looks, ridiculous. It looks like she got work done. Is all I'm saying. Like it looks like she she like they were starting to sag a little bit. And she decided to like. Perk them up a bit by getting some work done, you know? That's all I'm saying. And here we go, poor old May, at the age of 24, looking like a 12-year-old. Yeah, well, you know, some people are not so lucky. Anyways. We got old Johnny looking swaller than ever. That I'm, that I'm okay with. That. <laughs> so, oh, Button Jones, the fire alarm. Uh, don't worry about it. The but kids. It's all right. The, the, it's all right. This this uh, boat, on our, this slow boat to Argentina is... Uh, as fire escapes, okay? As long as those kids get on that, those... I mean, plus, if it's women and children first, they won't mind us sitting down here and doing this stupid podcast. Anyways, let's talk about this merch. Hopefully, it doesn't sink on the boat. So, we left Tunisia, and uh, we're now headed to Argentina as stowaways, but don't tell no one. If you tell your mom, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> hey, that's someone's mom. I'm not going to kill their mom. Their mom's probably a nice lady and just only did the right thing. But I'm going to kill them for being a snitch. But what if they, what if uh, their mom dies because of the heartbreak that their son is dead and you and you left them in a very hard position that made it look like they, they, they uh, did erotic asphyxiation? That's going to be... That's, her mom... Like, his mom's not going to be able to... Or their mom's not going to be able to tell, uh, tell their family how he died. Or they died. Through a massive nut. But also while choking himself. Like David Carradine. Or Louis C.K. He's still around. You call that around his career is dead. Yeah. That's what he gets for, that's what he gets for being a chronic and very gross masturbator. Yo, well, masturbation is always gross. <laughs> it's gross, but it's even more gross when uh, you do it over the phone. A premium show? More like a premium show. <laughs> Anyways, uh So boys, we completed the merch line. The prototypes are in. Uh, before I, I, I only play tested them with Tav. I wanted to show them how good. Uh, I mean, I pretty much sent sent them unpainted prototypes to play with. You could really this, which is why it was so hard for him to distinguish people. But now, now we got everything. We got all, and we got all the correct accessories. For example, you got Lightning Jones's Gatling laser gun. Yep. Uh, Turmo's you uh, uh repair repairman Turmo. <laughs> His ladder chair. Utility Turumo. <laughs> yeah, double gun uh, heavy face. Got two a- M1A ones. And you got a uh, you got briefcase. I gotta go to work. Saber. And he's got a gun. <laughs> he's got a Han Solo pistol. Yeah, like, also, his is the figure that's yelling because he's so mad that he needs to go to work, and you dinks won't let him go. And we have a uh, machine gun Josh, who's also who's got luscious lips. <laughs> Okay, look how smug his face is. I need to look at that. Look at those, look at those, uh, those weird sex lips he's got. He's like, hmm. It makes sense for for Josh in real life. <laughs> he's put the end saber. <laughs> oh, there you go. And then we have a uh, shotgun Yuri with her drawing pad. Yeah. And then we have hers uh, is the most stableist figure actually. She sends up pretty right. Then we have Kisaragi with his uh. With his helmet and Wolverine claws. Vega claws, I thought we said. Sorry, and his Vega claws. And then, if you collect all figures, uh, you can create elephant armor turmoil since all uh, figures come with a piece of him. Yeah. 
Uh, technically, so does Terumo, because Terumo comes with the sword. Terumo comes with the sword. Uh, His elephant sword. Yeah, and everybody else has like a piece of like the of like the armor thing. Yeah, it's like when you buy those Marvel Legends figures and you create the Fortnite guy. Yeah, so. Uh, but they've all been play tested. Uh, you told me that Terumo asked the question if these were covered in lead paint. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna just have to ask Terumo to stick them in his mouth to see if he wants to review their uh, taste or in the you know lead content. Yeah, I mean Terumo doesn't have anything much to live for, so he can at least do that for us. <coughs> I mean, uh, we mo- I mean, why would I need real Trumo if I have this figure of him? Yeah, that actually does things. He's got utility. Yeah, he's got a cha- he's got a folding chair. If you need to, sit, if you, the other characters to sit down, he's not gonna sit. He's too busy keeping an eye out for people's comfort. And he's got a ladder. If he's got to go up a tree, save a cat, maybe maybe you're playing and you got Tav. You know, Tav, you know, your Tav action figure gets mad and grabs uh, Saber's suitcase. And tosses up into a tree or on someone's <laughs> roof. Who's gonna get it down? Tarumo. Exactly. So, which is a, a bit bigger tragedy once the kids realize that to, that once you collect all the characters, Tarumo, you can uh, you you can put together the dark evil version of Tarumo. But the again, yeah, yeah, but everyone knows that like you know when kids play with these toys, they're not gonna stick to the script. I mean, that's how fan fiction starts. It's like how uh, maybe you know a little bit more about this, but I've did, I've done a little bit of research on like old like 80, 90s toys. I find it so fascinating to see how photographers for these toys set up these figures. For example, there's this like weird image in like a in like this J.C. Penney like Christmas catalog where it's a thing of the Thundercats, but for some reason in like the Lion Tank, or whatever it's called, it was like that Lion Tank. I think it was the Lion Tank, yeah. For some reason, Mumra and uh, and Lion are both riding in the Thunder Tank together. It's just to show that if if kids wanted to, they can stick a Mumra in there because maybe in their maybe play- maybe Lion only maybe Lion knows if your Mumra ride to his work. <laughs> Carpooling. I want to meet the kid that ta- that bought those toys and said, you know what? I don't you know I love the Thundercats, but you know what makes me mad about them? Uh, they're too violent. What if they're just going to regular jobs? Do they work in an office like my dad at his like firm? And maybe Mumra, he's like, he, you know, his car broke down that week, and maybe Lionel's gonna give him a ride. Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're cooler buddies. Huh? You don't know. Maybe they work in different departments. They have nothing against each other. They're not competitive. They they know they have to work together to make this company be be better. It's funny because that reminds <clears> me of like this thing that Post Malone was uh, once said, <clears throat> which is as like when he was in middle school, he used to he used to aspire to be like his dad. So he'd literally come to work. He'd literally come to school in a full suit and tie, and like That's slip ba- and, sl- and slip back his hair. I just find that story funny. Po- post is uh, not for me, but for you guys, depends. Yeah, if you wear depends, you listen. <laughs> you listen to if you're if you're a real cultured gentleman and human being, you listen to uh, depends. <laughs> no, you listen to prod rock. <laughs> yeah. What's that thirty-eight got- minute song? <laughs> Mike Oldfield's tubular belt. It's actually like around forty minutes. You listen to Mike. You listen to Mike uh, Oldfield's forty-minute song, uh, tubular belt. His whole album is just one single track. And you want to talk about real prod rock? One minute you're listening to the intro of The Exorcist, literally, and then the next minute you're listening to something completely different. But it's one song. Yeah. So there. Lichen's music uh, corner. Uh, yeah. Uh, buy tubular bells. Listen to it. If you can't buy it, listen to it. Uh, I don't want to encourage you guys to, you know, steal stuff. It's not good. I paid a dollar for mine, and it's just a cassette. So, you know, go to Dollar Tree. All right, moving on. Uh, like, it in, like it in Tav's uh, movie corner. Hold on. Before you do that, <coughs> I got one last question about the figures. Mm. Which one of these is your is your favorite as in, like, the best painted, best accessorized one? I don't know why. I mean, I can't, I can't, say, <laughs> I can't say myself. I think, the t- I think yours isn't bad. I think the three most best painted, in my opinion, in order. Okay. Jod, Turmo, Saber. Yeah. Okay. Because Jod, I don't know what uh, Jod actually looks like. It's the figure. <laughs> I don't know. Why. <laughs> Was that the last one you did? This uh, uh, I think uh, the second wave. He's the first one I did. Oh. No, he's the se- the second wave. He's the second one I did. Taruma was the first one I painted. Cause I don't know, cause I don't know what you did, but Jod's actual body and stuff. Actually- okay, to be fair, uh, his- I only painted the the top and his face, and then the. But rest even of then, the- his top isn't that bad. No, it's not. But again, thanks to uh, the original colors of these figures, it lended themselves well. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting that these were actually made from Luchador. Why are you telling? <laughs> <laughs> 
to, 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 I'm gonna cut that out. Um, All right, now moving on to Tavin Likens' movie corner because Likens has made a theory about a certain movie lately. You're watching Predator on our Check Six Late Movie. Oh yeah, so uh, Tav saw Deadpool two with me. Uh, it was enjoyable. It was fun. So you put spoiler warnings or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert for whatever. You're on Instagram. You know what the spo- fucking spoiler is, you dumbasses. If you're on Twitter and Instagram, you already know the spoiler for all these movies, man. Yeah. It's, anyway, spoiler alert for people who live on the rocks. Spoiler uh, for Infinity War. Thanos uh, becomes the Fortnite guy. Yeah. Um, why are you trying? Sorry, is, Thanos is the Fortnite. Is it Geeks Rog your saber who hates? Anyway, um, gotta go to work, damn it. <laughs> Saber speaker. <laughs> he wanted you guys to take me to work. He's pointing at like the job. Oh, he's actually pointing at you. <laughs> the real you, not your toy you. Hold on. Anyways, uh, so I realized that, wait a minute, is it me or does this entire movie seem like a weird timeline version of the Tavi, of, of the, of Tavi, of the Taviverse? And, cause like, the main kid that Deadpool has to like, deal with in the movie is pretty much Tav after he's eaten, hot uh, radioactive hot Cheetos, uh, that he was not aware of. And gain fire powers, you know. And Deadpool is kind of like Kisaragi, I guess. He can survive anything. Yeah, I mean, he fought in the war. His, yeah. He survived an elephant eating his platoon. Yeah, so that, yeah, so his durability is what makes him into Kisaragi. Uh, and then Cable's pretty much a saber. Like the time-traveling one. Man, I can't believe the guy who played the Fortnite guy in Infinity War went back, also played the guy who played Saber. Yeah. Also plays Saber. He's yeah. lucky. Yeah, he's a great role. And this one, he doesn't have to go to work. He's just got to kill Tav because in, I guess he's that saber from a timeline where Tav uh, takes his, takes over the Hot Cheetos company, sets the world off into a war because he then starts in, like encroaching on people's rights and corporations and then decides to, pit, decides just to go on a murder spree by murdering people's families and he kills Saber's family, which causes Saber to like go back in time to kill Tav so he can prevent the, corporate, the corporate wars. But then Kisaragi's like... No, if I stop him from like eating uh, more of the hot Cheetos, eating more of the hot Cheetos and killing Doctor Bill, uh, who abused this version of Tab, which is what caused him to eat those radioactive hot Cheetos without thinking about what that, what, why they look so different, uh, then maybe Tab might. That not... was a special like chili green flavor. Yeah, exactly. Chili, it... chili green flavor. <laughs> so if I stop him, if I stop him from doing that, maybe I can prevent the future. Uh, so Kisaragi assembles uh, the ta- the uh, tabby, the the Tabby Face TV uh, sidekick group, which consists of uh, of Alfredo's played by uh, Terry Crews, Marcolis based uh, played by um, the guy who the, the guy who played the clown in it. Uh, oh, that was him. Yeah, that was a that was a what's his name? Bill Skarsgård. Huh. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, some. Uh, then you also have Grog played by some by some new by, by some newcomer uh, with a cool ponytail who comes from a, a universe where he says he's better than everyone. <laughs> is that Primo Shadowstone? Is that Shadowstone's actual character? Uh, well, he's not an asshole like that. He's way he's a little bit different like that, but you know it's for comedy. Mm. It's comedy. And of course, throughout this, Kisaragi is eating. It's being aided by cameraman Keel. <laughs> and yeah, it's just it, I mean, and oh wait, they also recruits uh, Yuri in this one, so. Yeah, it just it, I just found it weird that like the whole movie seems like a weird fever dream that Tav would come up with part of the Tav lore. Yeah, and also you know there's a part where I break out off an arm Trumo. Yeah, so the, yeah, okay, so here's the big spoiler. So at one point in the movie, the kid that Deadpool's trying to catch uh, teams up with the Juggernaut, which they finally did justice to, um, and. Uh, I re- I told I jokingly said like you know is it is it me or is this literally just you breaking out elephant armor to Rumo? And <laughs> it actually was Tisaragi and her. Yeah, he was the he was the one part of the platoon <laughs> that got away. All right, I'm gonna, oh, I've been waiting a long time to do this. 
Why does he just straight up just rip Deadpool? Because he's annoying. And they go, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip you in half right now. Anyways, uh, and yeah, that's just, that's my, my, it's not so much a theory, it's just a weird observation. It's just like, is, is it me or is Deadpool 2 strangely like something from the Tav lore, <coughs> like an alternate timeline Taviverse? So. It doesn't matter because Dr. Bill gets killed at the end by Vernias. <laughs> yeah. Which seems about right if you think about it. Uh, at least he got his comeuppance. Yeah. But also, I guess, like in Jones, myself, uh, I'm Colossus in this one. Yeah. And I fight Elephant Armor to Rumo. He th- I, I, I was promised to fight a pig. I fought an elephant. That's not fair. You thought you came in to help you throw your foot a pig. Oh, yeah. I can take care of a pig. Yeah. How big a pig? It doesn't matter how big a pig. I can, I can take any size pig on. You promised me a pig. This is an elephant. An armored elephant. That's not part of the agreement, Kisaragi. No wonder I didn't want to help you and your fucking ass. So your brother's trying to get, always trying to get inside your head. Yeah, but he's in a wheelchair. So I guess we're even, Steven. <laughs> get out of my head, Charles. <laughs> get out of my head. Where's that, where's that, what is the origin of the meme? Oh, it's from an old YouTube video called I'm the, I'm the Juggernaut Pitch. Literally that. It's, it's old from like two... Okay, my friends were quoting this before the movie came out. And then they started quoting it more. Uh, no, then they stopped quoting it because the movie quoted it and the movie was bad. They killed off my favorite guy. Yeah. Cyclo- I'm, it's not spoiled for Red but come on, guys. I mean, in the, in the people- opening minutes, because uh, they were mad that the actor went to go shoot Superman Returns. Oh, big man. But you guys really regret that now. Yeah, because he's a good actor. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, Movie Corner. Uh, What's this? Uh, oh yeah, I gotta do a Momo so Kun update. Oh, really? It's been a while. I got no updates on... Nigri? On Nigri or, uh, or Noodles. Um, they're just... There. It, they're just there. They're doing their thing, uh, except maybe Noodles is losing more money. <laughs> but anyway, Momokun update. So recently, Fanime happened. Yeah. Which was uh, earlier in May at the time of this recording. Well, kind of like midway through May, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Momokun was supposed to go to Fanime, but there was a bit of a controversy going on. Oh, no. Where Momokun refused to just pay for her badge to go, but she still wanted to go, so she tried like sneaking Wait, in. Wait, hold on. She repeat. was not a guest. Hold on, repeat that again. Um, Momokun essentially snuck into Fanime, but because she was cosplaying, no, no, hardly any, or hardly the staff didn't even bother catch her. They thought she was just a guest. Oh, but hold on, is there? Tell me, there's like a. I was a stroll. Yeah, there's three pages of this. Here, how about you play the? You play the. You play the <laughs> parts that aren't. Uh, Mariah, and I'll play Mariah herself. Mariah? Mariah. Okay. Rumo's wife. Uh, <laughs> this is for you, Rumo doll. Uh, okay, I'm gonna not say this person's name out loud. Yeah. I saw you a lot. Never inside, though, or with a badge. What's up with the pic of the guy with you who said that he let you use his badge to get in the dealer's hall? I don't wear a visible badge on my cosplay. I was, mo- I was inside multiple times, and he let another cosplayer use his badge. Not me. His name is, uh... A TV's Doogie Hazard. And he let... Bart, I'm scared. Let's get out of here. His ba- let his badge. And I, I had don't think they'll know who own. fucking... Bart, I'm scared. Let's get out of here. Is based on, like... And he let... Bart, I'm scared. Let's get out of here. <laughs> no, her grammar's I'm... really bad. He let... Bart, I'm scared. Let's get out of here. His badge. I had purchased my own. Yeah, it was me. I used this badge. How about you mind your own damn business? I fucking hate Instagrammers' grammar here. I hate Instagrammer. Ugh, it's like the worst. It is. And plus, with like my really, with like maybe the mild dyslexia I have, it just it upsets me because I can't read this. Okay, let me try again. You said both of you, but anyways, why did she have to use someone else's badge? That's not allowed at all. <laughs> is that it? People get kicked out for way less, and when you're in a, when you're a public figure. Need to do the right thing, or at least respect the con. 
I do respect the con. I always get a badge, even if I don't go inside the con. As a public figure, I know this, and I can only advise my friends to do the same. I cannot force my friends to buy something or respect something. Wait, what? Hold on. Uh, I do respect the con. I always get a badge, even if I don't go inside the con. As a public figure, I know this and can only advise my friends to do the same. I cannot force my friends to buy something or respect something. That's fucked up. What? Hold on. No, no, no. You should... You, I mean, you can't force, but you, I mean, you can tell your friends, dude, don't do this. Uh, but also you can say, like, hey, if you're going to do she something, I can't. She's a hypocrite because she's doing the same thing. She's like, I know she's covering her ass, but I'm just saying, but, like, that's also, like. She's covering her ass while ass blasting her friend that also did the same thing with her. Yeah. Uh, then uh, this person's like, uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Also, what, also, way to go, Fanime. You guys don't have wristbands? Wow. And then, hold on. And then someone else straight up. So you fucking... So, okay, I love the last comment here. I'll take your word for it. Then some other dude is replied, Stop snitching! And the last one is, If you have money for travel, hotel, merch, cosplay, you should support the con. Mariah said she bought a badge, and I have no evidence to argue otherwise. But she's the one who snitched. I was asking because I wanted confirmation. If you're in the public eye, you can't do shady shit like that. The people who run Fanime work extremely hard and don't deserve well-known cosplayers being like, Yeah, I snuck in, lol, mind your own business. Oof. Big fucking oof. Oh, man. She's like... This is... This is up there with, like... The whole... I'm an influencer. She snuck into her con with a friend because of... And with another guy friend who was loaning their badge to them. And note that most cons have wristbands. Yeah. But because of Mariah's status as a popular cosplayer, no one bothered to check her wrist for the wristband or her friend either. But then people were kind of saying, like, Mariah, did you, st- did you uh, actually go inside the con? She's like, yeah, I did. You know, I was there. I bought everything. And I bought the whole con. Probably could. Maybe. No, she can't. You kidding me? Oh, yeah, she's not making much. Um, <laughs> ooh. Oh. oh, yeah. Also on that. No, I'll, I'll say another bit. So yeah, she snuck into a con. This is threw her friend under the bus. This is this is, yeah, that's bad. But she's like, yeah, my friend did li- it, did it, but I didn't, and I can't force my friends to do good things in this world. I can only rec- I can only recommend that they do it. It'd be like if it'd be like if say, if Keith Rogers and I screwed up the timeline, and was like, guys, what happened to the timeline? I'm like. Well, I didn't do it. I, I just saw Kisaragi do it. I didn't bother doing it because he's strong. Looked at him. And then Kisaragi said, "Yeah, I did it. So what?" <laughs> okay, you know what's worse is that like no, be, her... no. Saber's like, well, guys, you mess up another timeline. You know, uh, what? I went to another timeline, but I wasn't the one who messed things up. That was Kisaragi. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I did it. He's like, that, he's like, Dad, you were there. I'm like, no, I wasn't. I was watching. So hey. Saber, why don't you mind your own business, Saber? <laughs> it's my fucking timeline. This is my universe. It's not the Saberverse. <laughs> it's not the Saberverse. It's a Tabbyverse. It's upsetting because it's like... God. This is... It's a slippery slope, my friends. I mean, I know... The thing is, like, That's once not... somebody becomes, like... That's the thing, is, like, once somebody becomes, like, a social media influencer or, like, a celebrity... Essentially, it becomes, influencer. like... <laughs> it's It's the whole celebrity thing. It's, like... I mean, before then, we had reality TV stars, and they would do shady shit when they didn't get their way because maybe they they somebody said you're not as important as you think you are, and therefore you can't get into everything you like. It's like you know, it's like you know the story that happened in like VidCon last year, right? Where like the or like they weren't allowed in until a certain time, and then the vid, then like some Instagram model uh, was trying to was trying to like come in and like was pretty much like harassing the security guy, saying like you're a rebel and you fucking look ugly. That shirt. Oh yeah, you. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Although, funny enough, it turns out that guy has no longer has an Instagram career. And at, yeah, the, ta- at the time of the, at that event of like that weekend, it turns out the security guard himself had more followers on Twitter than that guy. As a response to that guy's like tomfoolery. Fuck, yeah, it was a big fuck you. Because you know who won in the end? The man, <sighs> the blue collar man doing his blue collar job. Sticking out for America, you know, paying his taxes. Where's your free, where's your medical insurance, Instagram guy? <laughs> Oh, uh, and his parents probably have it. It's because he, because if this kid is able to afford, clothes, where's like, your, where's your dental? His parents, it, this kid is probably like an affluent asshole. 
That's true. Well, I, I think most of these Instagrammers are probably like pretty affluent. You know, they probably have like rich parents or something. I mean, it only it's the only reason why they could like live in places like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. us blue collar Joes who are on a sinking ship, maybe to Argentina, have to like sit here and record a podcast while women and children get in the lifeboats first. Also, what if that's just a dinner bell? Oh, dinner bell. <laughs> Dad, wait. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, I'll just take over the <laughs> the rest of it, unless he comes back and finds out maybe that was the fire alarm bell, and then you sent them back there. You know, you gotta wait your turn. Uh, all right. So uh, while Tav has gone to check if it's the dinner bell or not, I'm going to. Uh, I'll just I'll just keep finish the thought about what about what happened with that. It's, it's horrible. It's. Uh, it just makes me mad because it's like, like what? <laughs> that was actually the fire alarm. Oh, so they are evacuating. No, dinner's ruined because there was a fi- because there was a fire in the kitchen. So they're not evacuating. The chef the chef didn't work on the SS Titanic. He worked for, he worked, he was the he was the cleaning guy on the SS Diarrhea. God damn it! So they're not evacuating? No. Oh, cool. Sweet. We'll make it to Argentina and ki- and kill all that kill all those Nazis after all. Um, no, I just fin- I was just, just telling uh, finishing up my final thoughts about how like. It's a bad trend because it's just like I hate seeing this pop up in like other in like other groups of people. You know, like it's bad enough to see like self-important YouTubers or Insta or Instagrammers, whatever, um, do it. But then once it like goes into like the cosplay group, yeah, it just as soon as I see it in like things that for I mean, look for the most part, there is like a bad side to like cosplaying, especially once like Patreon and like. At cosplaying becoming a job as soon as it becomes like a legit job that's when i think like it starts kind of being shitty because people will try to like uh, because of the rules of capitalism people will find like the quickest sh- shittiest way to like make money off of it and that's why we have negri and momokun and invader noodles so, um, so and then once and once all that goes to their head once like the whole like i have to be but it's, con- it's, all, it's only cosplayers that get affected by this whole like patreon like Oh, what's this? I'm making like enough money to live off of. I don't have to do much anymore. Then, it's a, a, a big example. is with Spoonie. Yeah, where's that movie, Spoonie? It's been two years, three years. Where's that content, Spoonie? <laughs> it's been, wait, we don't want vlogs. We want mo- We want. It's been too long. By the way, only by the way, the only, way to say, to say, the only way to say the only way to say Patreon now is the way how Boris says it. Patreon. The supporters of uh, Patreon. Do you know that there's a Hatreon? Hatreon? It's a Patreon for white supremacists. I'm not kidding you. Why? Because Because white supremacists who want to ha- start a Patreon get kicked off because Patreon's like, No! I don't want that! No, nope. I don't want that. So they started their own Patreon service. Oh, yes, baby. You know? I like the... Oh, yes, I like the baby. <laughs> but, but he's too... But he's, he, but but he's, he's a white supremacist. White supremacist. No! <laughs> I don't like that. I wish they would just do that to themselves. Um, you killed my wife with a camper van. <laughs> no, I'll come back. Return the favor. No, um, the other one too, I was going to tell you. So, you know how there's GoFundMe? Yeah. Go fuck me? No. <laughs> there's GoyFundMe. What? Yes. You know, how, you, you know how Goy is the word that like uh, Jewish people use for people who aren't Jewish? So there's so white supremacists, these damn racists have started a, a white Go- supremacist pa- Patreon and white supremacist GoFundMe called GoFundMe because they think these Jews are taking all their money off of GoFundMe. All these, you know, all these pothids up in the White House token up with President Trump trying to make us take cannabis oil for our cataracts. Oh, I say let if God's making me go blind, I say let him do it. He doesn't want you to see this world anymore. <laughs> yeah. USA! USA! <laughs> no, I'm moving to Canada. Forget this. I mean, we gotta go to Argentina first and take care of business. Yeah. Uh, it makes me actually think maybe we should have, like, gone up from Romania into Sweden, stolen Nazi gold, and then gone back down and have a. and just go to the Alps and live off that Nazi gold for a while. Well, we can't take it back to Bumberville. Who said anything? We'll just live in the Alps until the until the Nazi gold money's gone, and we'll save one bar, use that to pay our way to Bumblerville, and it'll be cool. Actually, no. We can use that money to renovate my restaurants. Don't you want gold bars of swastikas on it, Tav? No, we're gonna melt down the gold. 
<laughs> We're gonna melt down the gold and, and sell make it that. to a statue. Yeah, <laughs> make it make the new mannequins out of gold. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> These fucking toys. How uh, appropriate that it would be the Lycan Jones toy that I would knock over and knock over John and Saber. And Saber's body is gonna Alpha Room over. It's it's over Alpha Room. Oh, also Alpha Room was about to cut his cut his head open. Is this the battle where uh, Alpha Room kills Saber? Yeah. Okay. And it's pure. Is that timeline seven Saber that he kills? Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the evil Saber that he kills because he doesn't need him anymore. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That makes sense. See, it, uh, I just I just made a whole action figure scene. <laughs> what is this? Jaw gets shot by the face and like Jones eats a nap. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So you, uh, we have some art topics to talk about. Probably won't get around to five anime questions because I don't really have any uh, this week. I I got a few, but I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, you said you discovered an artist that you hate. Never have I. Never think, have I ever. Never have I ever hated. I don't know. I'm a I'm a big connoisseur of art. You know, I I got a few paintings. Of I was myself. gonna I thought that you were gonna say I'm a big connoisseur of hate. Never have I ever hated. But you know, I've hated, like look. I'm a man who hates a lot. Listen, to, listen, up, guys. I'm a man who hates a lot, but I'm also a big connoisseur of art. I got a few paintings of myself done in some uh, tasteful done some, nudes. Done in some tasteful nudes. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Uh, Playgirl magazine. Uh, where he's like covering his crotch and you see his big f- Bar- fuzzy body. Baroque is the more like casual yeah, Bar- one, right? No, Baroque is like the really dark one. Oh yeah. What's Hold the, on, that's the opposite I'll- Baroque. My bad. Uh, is it Rococo? Well, let me ask my my girlfriend. She knows more about this than I do. Even though I went to art school, but I I just kind of let all the classical art. What's up? Okay. What's the, what's the big grand paintings called? Is it Baroque or Rococo? Baroque and Rococo are very similar. Um, but like. But, I would like, like to say Rococo, but it might be Baroque. Isn't Baroque like, but like super ornate, but also kind of dark? Maybe. I thought that was Rococo. Yeah. Okay. Because very similar though. They're both dark and very ornate. Okay, but but, but, but what are the what are like those grand like paintings called? I know there's I know probably there's Baroque. Stuff. Do you mean like the like the big Roman ones with like the big like ornate? It's all ornate. It's probably Baroque. Do you mean the painting or do you mean the the paintings? The frame. Oh no, just the paintings. It's probably Baroque. Anyway, I got these big, grand Roman-style paintings in my house of myself. These are all church paintings that uh, of uh, these are all church paintings you took from the local church and posted, and then just poorly asked me to poorly draw. Hey, is this why you asked me to draw all those really bad faces of you? Yeah. You you cut out those beautiful paintings I made so you could post it over better paintings. Yeah. I don't blame you. I mean, we're also in the process of making it. A, pl- a, uh, lead- a plaster statue of myself. Tav, are you going to open up a, a, a Tav art gallery that's dedicated to yourself? Is this another... Location 3. Seriously. Location so, 3 with, a, with Foreigner Knights. Is the Tav... Is the Tavoland, the third location, just an art gallery? So the first two are, are bad pizza restaurants. The third one is, a, is an art gallery? Yeah, but this... But oh, on the Tavoland but, name? But on Friday, but on Friday nights at 9 p.m., Kiss it's gonna, night. It's gonna be journey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So it's gonna be filled with a bunch of drunken yahoos from Boston. Yep. Don't stop. I gotta. I gotta even. I mean, if we can get all the bikers to come in at kiss night and to Rumo <laughs> night, <laughs> I'm matching. Well, he come. Well, you know, he's supposed to come in anyway. Is any work there? Yeah, but more. But when when we say work, it means that he actually gets pretty. Pretty wasted, and then starts trying to hit on the uh, mannequin bartender. The, uh, when are you gonna install that slap, uh, that that slap mechanic, so he can slap him when he uh, makes lewd comments to her? I want to get around to it. You know, she doesn't mind it. She's a mannequin. Mannequins have rights, man. I saw the movie Mannequin, <laughs> starring no. Kim Kittrall. I think it was her. Well, you know, like I don't know. Personally, I think we should probably we should probably get a real bartender. Cause this whole like you can pour your own drinks essentially. I don't know if that's working out. Make a deal. Make a deal with the liquor store next door. I don't know. Those guys don't like me too much. <laughs> All right. So I keep, about- I keep kicking their ATMs as my account. Not, there's nothing in my account, and I'm trying to get money. <laughs> All right. So about this artist that you hate. So he's pretty infamous in the in like the Dragon Ball community. Or I love that phrase, Dragon Ball community. That makes my day. Online, yeah. 
but here's the thing. A lot of people, for, he mostly appears, he, he's infamous inside of it where, like, a lot of people who are pretty deep into it, uh, just hate him. Because, you know, we have, we have good reasons. Or they have good reasons. I'm not a big part of it, guys. So I don't know. Like, I'm... You have good reasons if you're bringing him up, okay? Okay. Well, as an artist, like, you would hate him because... Yeah. What he does, essentially, is like, all right, Goku versus Superman animations. Hey, that sounds cool. Imagine you're someone like who's not d- too deep into and don't know anything about this. You find Goku vs Superman animation, and the thumbnail looks kind of appealing. Yeah, and they don't—they don't look bad. I mean, it's a good. I mean, you could probably trick a, a young person or just a casual person scrolling through YouTube for some cool animations into liking it and yeah, you're like, watching oh, you're it. Yeah, like, oh, sick! This looks cool. And then you open it. Have that your diarrhea? That's the. Yeah, that's, that's the train. <laughs> Why do they put us in the ship cabin on this boat? Because we're stowaways. Like, <laughs> oh, wait, we're stowaways? You said you got tickets. Well, I paid a guy to listen. <laughs> Just... We got to look away. Okay, that's our ticket. <laughs> oh, okay, so I mean, they haven't noticed us. We've been going up to the dining hall. Wait, are we doing what Momokun's doing? Are no. we just walking in pretending like we own the place? Well, to be fair, that's why I told you to wear that captain hat. Oh. This is a sweetie swank t- I'm going to have to draw the thumbnail. <laughs> Alright, uh, so then what? So, he pretty much gets you in like, oh, what's this Goku and, Super- Goku and Superman fighting? That's cool. No, no wait, <laughs> if that were me, Goku and Superman fighting, that's not right. They should be best friends. They could stop that- the Fortnite guy that way. Okay. But, but, but anyway, you see this cool animation thumbnail like, huh, that looks decent. This art style sucks fucking dick. But anyway, you, you, you it, open it, it up it and could, you... It could pass for very good amateur art, is what I see. Even though this is a grown, 30-something-year-old man. You know, it, you know, people can start drawing and doing art at any age, man. So I'm, that's not a big deal to me. Like, But if you saw it, you would e- because of you know stereotypes, you would easily assume this is maybe some 14-year-old kid trying something new. But go on. And then you click the video, and you're like... First of all, this looks like dog shit. <laughs> and second of all, wait a minute, isn't this fight just scenes from the Frieza fight where Frieza's now John over Superman? Why is Superman shorter and look beefier? Oh no! Yeah, no joke. Like for a lot of the Superman and a lot of the Superman versus Goku fights, he literally takes scenes from like other fights throughout the series, even Super. Like for example, one one moment you see Goku doing like. This punch he did to Frieza, where, it, where Superman is straight up drawn over Frieza in the animation size. Oh. And then, in the next moment, you have uh, Superman appearing taller, because now he's drawn over Cell. I don't... Dude, be consistent. So it's really... That's pretty much like the whole extent to it. And here's the thing. His okay. art, even his art style is just bad in general. I don't like how... I don't like the man's art style. It seems kind of wonky and like... I mean, like I said, if he were just like an amateur who was also doing... Also, he's not doing himself favors with his profile image. Like I said, if he if he was just an amateur who was just trying to... Like, I've seen some of his artwork. And to me, he kind of sins on the on this part of... Uh, on this weird art thing you should never do if you want to do art seriously and want to be better. Never make art that's in between being super detailed and super simplified because it makes it look weird. Like, don't make things so simplified that, like, don't make things so simplified uh, in one aspect, but then also add details to one part of the thing because it looks weird. Don't do that shit. I mean, that's pure, like I said, like that's pretty much. I've seen like his profile pic, and my problem is just like the face Ooh. is too tra- is too clearly traced over somebody's face, but cartoonified. Uh, but then, like you have like this simple outline, like like uh, line style and coloring style, and it, it looks awful, and it's like it's unappealing. Also, one of the funnier parts about him that I just find really weird is that he kind of associates himself with One Punch Man. Ugh. So in animations where it's like One Punch Man versus you know insert character like Superman or whatever, he will actually voice One Punch Man himself. And oh he has to, no! And he has, like P- he has like PS2 online quality microphone. <laughs> okay, I gotta watch that. I gotta listen to that. That actually sounds really hilarious. Don't play it right now though. I'll watch. I'll listen to that later. No, but uh, pretty much the reason why he's so infamous is that he like uh, accuses other people of tracing artwork and whatnot. Oh, so. 
So, okay, go on. Literally, like, he's literally pulling him home between here by throwing people under the bus. Like, guys, I don't chase artwork, but this guy does. Look at his dog shit. I can tell, I can tell somebody not to trace it, but I can't force them. Like, there was this recent controversy. I can advise them to do it, but I can't force them. There was this recent controversy where, like, people were, were accusing the artist for Dragon Ball Super that he traced, that, uh, for him tracing, because, uh, he recently released an image of, like, Goku in a similar post of, like, a Captain America thing. Yeah. When in reality, it's been revealed that he's actually just a big fan of Captain America and wanted to pay homage to that. Yeah. So. He did, okay. He did a video talking about, uh, the possibilities of him tracing. And by the way, he actually came out and said he didn't trace it, though. He that's, just he, he just likes Captain America a lot. That's fine. I mean, the, the, there's only one big comic artist that I know who traces. Um, and er, the guy he, who did Steel. No, uh, and everybody who sorry the guy who did Diesel. Well, yeah, that's part of it. But no, no, I said big comic book artist. He's oh. a nobody from nowhere. Oh. Um, no, but this is like a guy who worked for Marvel and did like covers and did like entire like ran entire books, um, and everybody knows him as like. He's the fucking tracer. Um, and that's, uh, I think his name is, Gr is it Greg Land? I can't remember what his name is because it's been a while. It's back when I used to, pre like, always re get my news from actual comic book magazines than actual comic book websites. Was the World in Toy Fair? Uh, Toy Fair was for toys. Because, uh, oh, sorry, Wild World then? Wizard World, yeah. Um, and what, uh, what was just called Wizard Magazine. Oh, yeah. Wizard World was the, the convention, yeah, the con. But anyways, so this artist who worked for Marvel, I think maybe a little DC there, but it's I mostly knew him for Marvel. He would do is uh, he would just straight up trace. I mean, he would trace photographs, not so much other people's artwork, and which is I, which is fine because if you're trying to like, it kind of seems kind of weird. It kind of seems kind of weird, but like if you're tracing artwork, uh, uh, other people's artwork for your own, that's bad. Which he did get caught for doing. <laughs> But he was also tracing photographs for some poses, which is fine because if you don't get a pose, uh, then what better way to learn it from like looking at an actual like like photograph or a person actually in the pose you want to do? Um, but the the it ran into bigger problems when we realized that a lot of his poses for women, especially when they're getting hurt, were poses from pornography. Ooh. So it looks like in one scene where like somebody's like powering up, it's really a woman like. Having a an orgasm while getting boned down, <sighs> yeah, and it's funny because somebody discovered that, and there was an entire like article about it uh, a few from a few years ago that juxtaposed like the original um, photograph and the and the 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 artwork. So he got in trouble. That's, uh, that's kind of funny though. Right, it's hilarious. But, and, but <laughs> that anyway. man's career, I think, is gone. No, actually, he I think he still has like a job. <laughs> Because people just don't care. Because he, because people like his artwork apparently, or he gets the job done, whatever. But I, I, I think that not anymore though. No. Well, back to Master Media. Pretty much, he like uh, the only people that call him out are like uh, big, compo big players in like the community. Yeah. Because you think like the only hey, big, a hey, big player, a hey, big fellow. You hear that, Kurt Franklin? Hey, big fellow. You hear about this Master Media? Oh, let me see. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Not oh, what's me. oh, what's this? Goku for Superman? Number two? <laughs> Is that really what it's called? No, there's a bunch of them, man. I'll, I'll show you the channel after post podcast. Okay. Or, you know, when we get to Argentina or something. I don't know how good... How, guys, uh, leave down in the comments below. How good is the Argentinian uh, Wi-Fi? Very good. Better than fucking America's, apparently. You know, we don't, they don't have no as eat pie. Oh, he's kind of irrelevant now. Yeah, go on. That's it. <laughs> see, if you put it... See, he can put... If you put it in this hand... Put him on this handle. He could he could sniper rifle it. See, so he could go up, uh, up I'll here just up on like, a grassy knoll. Grassy knoll to take out Taruma or Tav. Probably Tav. He still wants my set, even though he destroyed my set, my house. But anyway, even uh, he's going after the Tavo land locations now. Yeah, that made sense. There you go. I banned him from kissing it after he after he tried to bone down my mannequin. God damn it! At least at least Taruma. He's trying to flirt with it. He's, tr he's trying to get to the old-fashioned way. Yeah, but John, but John just hopped on it. He started triumphing. Oh, sounds like something. Go on. But anyway. So, so this guy. So this fucking we, guy. Go on. Yeah, this fucking guy. You go on his Twitter, and it's mostly a lot of him responding to haters and him saying, like, guys, I don't trace. And, like, you're like, dude, we have clips of you on your Twitch 
of you working on animations, of you tracing over animation cells and frames. Don't lie. <laughs> Explain that, homie. And he's like, the guy's that's only, not me. He's like, guys, only use it for reference. Mm hmm. Reference. Really? Not. So you call it a reference despite the fact that. Yeah, you're obviously tracing. But yeah, pretty much a lot of big players in the Dragon Ball community have been calling him out and trying to. But note this he'll only go after like. Uh, people who have like only like two followers are like saying, Oh like, no he, he does this, he pits on little people. Right, like, some people like will come on Twitter and be he like He picks on little people? He the, pits okay, he pits on people that are, don't have like a large follower base. If oh, like, it, like a two follower guy. Like, that, okay, that's just as bad as picking on little people. Yeah, like for example, some guy's like, Hey, your animation sucks, you know, whatever. He tells him that. And he instead will like go you after suck. Him. He will like go he will like try to go like into him and whatnot. He <laughs> He's a weirdo. We'll try to go into him, but then when a big Dragon Ball boy, uh, community boy, goes after him, he says nothing. He just avoids him like the plague. Please don't hurt me. Because he knows that, like, if he responds, he knows he'll lose that battle. So he only he only fights battles he know he'll win. This is not a drawing pad. This is a very elaborate vape pen. Yuri doesn't vape. I gotta take this. I gotta replace this. Give one. it to Jod. He vapes. <laughs> really? No, he's no, he's a he smokes a ganja. He smokes the devil's lettuce. Ew. Then yeah, he hides in Pringle cans in the back of his <laughs> oh, car. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. And Saber doesn't vape either. Look, no Lycan Jones has to go to fucking work, okay? Why does he go to work now? Especially dressed like that. Hey. No shoes, no service. I got a shirt on, don't I? Yeah, but, you know, two for three, no shoes, no <laughs> oh, service. Oh, God, that sucks. <laughs> Fine. Should it? I'll just draw. I'll get a sharpie and draw some sandals on him. No, that, that'd be betraying the character. Like in Jones wears dad sandals. I've been trying to get a pair. There's a bunch of. There's a bunch over the Burlington. I know. It's, I vape now. Whoa! Okay. Whoa! That's a big vape. <laughs> but anyway, that's a pretty big vape. Did you any of your friends vape? He's, he's whatever. I don't. Saber's... Saber. Kistrati doesn't. Yuri doesn't. Uh, the closest thing we have is... Is Jod, maybe. I think Jod's hit a vape a couple times. <laughs> okay, go on, though. But, yeah, like... Pretty much he, do he uh, avoids a lot of, like, the big com big players in the community. And whatnot. Just pretty much, like, anytime anybody calls him out that's, like... Has, like, ten followers or less or something. He'll actually, like, put them on blast. And whatnot. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, but then here's the thing. He calls out other artists for for tracing too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You you told me about this. So like uh, the, the quote I sent you that he actually tweeted out to someone, which I will repeat. This is his words, and he's such a fucking asshole too. Ugh, I don't like that. Let me see. Where can I find it? Oh, here we go. This is your art. LMFAO, boy, you looked at the picture from the anime and drew and claimed it's your own. That's just as bad as tracing. This picture is some dodge shit, by the way. My unborn daughter could draw better than this. That doesn't look that bad. It looks like if somebody was doing it for the first time. Yeah. And, I mean, to be fair, everybody traces when they start. I mean, I knew a lot of kids who would just trace over Dragon Ball Z pictures and pencil and put over on, on the front of their binders. Right next to, the, right next to their lowrider picture. That their, that their older brother drew yeah. or something. Yeah. This is more accurate. There you go. But yeah, um, he's a piece of shit. That's all I gotta say about him. Wow. Uh, any new developments after you discovered him, though? Like, maybe has anybody tried to like take him down? Or, there's like, a lot of people. There's him? a lot of people in the community. Because the only reason I found out about it was uh, other people. Any, any the like community. whole YouTube like expo like ex exposure videos? Like people just like so and so exposed. There are so many, but because he ignores them, they don't affect them for some oh. reason. And people have been trying to like call him out for him. Uh, he just pretty much like, nope, that's not me. He just like, he just does not. He just denies everything. We can't do anything to stop him because, here's the thing: we can't take down his channel because he's not copyright infringing at all. Because he traces over everything, so it's his work now. Lame. So we can't be like, hey YouTube, this guy's stealing animation. That this guy's of... stealing anime. Literally, yeah. <laughs> this guy's stealing anime. Take care of him. No, oh, you can't. This was this was like custom animation to me. Oh, by the way, YouTube started fucking things up too now. What? In what way? What's? Why are they messing hey, with the hey, algorithm? Hey boys, you like uh, you like you like those channels you subscribe to? Yeah. 
How about we only recommend you the videos that we think you should be watching from that person then? You're still subscribed to him, but if this video came out like six months ago, it's in your sub bots now. Because we want you to watch it. That's... Oh, you know what? I have a coworker who mentioned something like that. Or or the fact that, like, the, algor the algorithm's so fucked now that it recommends, him, like, every video by that person now yeah. on the sidebar. It's just like, that's weird. I clicked on one Flat Earther video that, that debunks it, and... And Speaking now, that, now I got a whole bunch of videos saying that it's real. Who am I supposed to believe now? Do you want to talk about the diff compilation story thing? <sighs> I gotta find that video first. And a lot of people have been looking for that video. Um, I think that dude probably took it down. Um, but this is like, this is like some person, like some some concerned parent who needs to take up. <laughs> uh, you think that parent would buy the turmo figure? I don't know. You're a parent. Uh, if you were a parent, I did this, I did this to my son. Which one of these action figures would you? You know what? I'm gonna give my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna do saber a favor. I'm gonna give my figure the most boring weapons. So I'm gonna have a a super sized vape pen <laughs> and a briefcase and a briefcase. But what's I, in the briefcase? Uh, I'm gonna go to a. I, I'm a convention goer. I got all my artwork for my booth. Uh, like in Jones Convention Place, it's coming soon. See how Sack Academy works out. Uh, so, are you nuts to the are you are you nuts to the RMA guys? Oh hell yeah! Dude, <laughs> this guy in the wolf mask is creeping us out. <laughs> he's just terrible. He's <laughs> drunk. He's he's wearing nothing but uh, a wolf mask and a and a white cod piece. What do we do? Mm. Well, to be fair, it's you know, guys, we don't want to you know we don't want to be sexist here, so. You know, if women can walk around the conventions wearing, like, bikinis with, like, a wig and call it a cosplay, then this guy in his wolf mask and, and, uh, and a jock strap should be able to do it. <laughs> That's an ugly image. It's such a weird image. <laughs> what is this, Richie telling us the truth? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's the convent, it's the, uh, no, it's Crystal and the Richie. I don't like this. This guy, I just tell... We gotta tell the convention tell the guy to put on more clothes. No, we can't tell that because then we have to tell all the women to put on more clothes. And that's that's not right. People should be able to. So on your booth, are you gonna be selling the figures then? Yeah, one figure, a hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, Kizaragi would probably buy that, right? No, Kizaragi, I'll buy. Well, his figure's pretty cool, to be fair. I'll sell him for ten dollars. Ten dollars, man. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> In a couple years. I, I know for a fact you probably don't want to sell this jaw figure. You want to keep this at home. No, let's sell it. Let's have some pork to deal with them. <laughs> you want to keep your favorite figure, the jaw figure? I'd rather keep the Turmo figure. He's got more utility. That's true. Who's going who's gonna to repair the light bulb on the tiny set? Who's going to... Who's going to... He can roll out. After a hard day's work, he can place down his chair and sit down for a while. Yeah. And then when then when Saber accidentally breaks another light bulb from shooting it, <laughs> shooting it from the glass on the grassy knoll, and honestly that gun I think works best with Jod. Uh, it's kind of sad because actually uh, Saber can hold this one better. Oh, but anyway, now he's got the vape stuck in his arm, <laughs> or is the vape powering him up? The vape is powering me up. Oh wait, now he's time traveler. He doesn't have a vape pen anymore. It's a t it's his time traveling device. Oh, that sticks right into the spine. So if you rip it out, say will go back in time. No, he puts he, he attaches it so he can go forward. He can go. He can travel through time. Okay. So I don't know. First of all, Cable did it for him. He did it for him because he knows he's a good person deep down. You know, I mean, yeah, Deadpool's a little silly, you know, but who isn't? My mom. It's the whole business. He said, "Son, when you grow up, and you got a disease in you, a disease that'll make you furry and and horrible looking." And I said, "Puberty." No, not puberty. Werewolfism. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> you mother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Transition to five anime questions. This time, uh, I was gonna talk. I was gonna talk about that Sonic you fan comic. Oh, all right, go for it. And then we're going to five anime questions. That's a we'll do a speed round of that. Okay, I'll just real. No, actually, uh, I'll save my fan comic uh, for next uh, for next episode. This is this requires uh, as much space as uh, 
as your as your shitty tracer guy, which is just ugh. He's also not an attractive human being, but you know who am I to judge? Yeah, well, this action figure makes you look kind of weird, but that's fine. I just and he can't glass. be as handsome as fucking Jod, who's got the best figure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty cool action pose of Jod. <laughs> God damn it, he's got the best action figure. Look at him, he's holding the gun up, his his arms slightly bent. He looks like he's ready for action. My character looks like he's he's got an erection. <laughs> This guy, he looks like he's very you want to talk about the weird paint job that these that that these uh, sweatshop kids did on your crotch area? Is that a weird reference to something, Tab? That I don't know about. No, I think they got things pretty accurate. <laughs> All right, so uh, five anime. You got you got them for me yeah. this week. This Flip the artwork. <laughs> All right, I got questions. Not about anime, but about anime games. Where do you where do you stand on Senra and Kagura? Mm. Where do you stand on Bible Sorry, Black? alcoholic diarrhea. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Where do I stand on Senra and Kagura? I think you it's a fun like beat 'em up game. Uh, like I don't know how if uh, like look. There are a lot of characters I like because like, I think they have cool designs. Not counting the giant fat tits. <sighs> I, it is something that's like, I know you're playing this game for the titties, man, okay? You know, we know you're nutting right now. Yes! And it's hard to nut while you're too busy doing all this, like, beat-em-up stuff on the game, okay? One hand. <laughs> I'm disappointed that the 3DS version didn't include a lot of boob jiggle. Oh, they did. Oh. You can make them bigger, actually, in the 3DS version. <laughs> Anyways, I like a lot of the char- weird character designs in their... And what passes for a fucking ninja now? <laughs> ninja. Ugh. But, uh, and I do have, like, some problems with, like... I, I like how boring some of... The, or not or not boring, but, like, how some, how weird some of the outfit choices are. Like, I like how the... What is essentially the main character... Her ninja outfit is literally, I have a scarf now. <laughs> or the kicking one is just, like, my shirt is open now and I have these giant boots. I mean... At least, like, one of the one of the new characters that came in, like, Estival Versus, hers is, like, one... Like, in normal form, I'm flat chest. The other one, I got... I got oh, these, i seen that, yeah. I got these notches the size of my head. Yeah. Maybe bigger. I like the one with the dolphin guns. That's pretty cool. Mm. I like that. That's cool. Uh, and the one who's a Tycho drummer is really cool, too. Mm-hmm. Or the one who's got, like, the... The one that looks like Jotaro. Yeah. That's, that's her cool. teacher. Her teacher is... Yeah. That she's she's maybe my favorite, but that's because she's their, one of their teachers. She's so. so small. Yeah. Well, I always go for the older women. So, if you you if you look like you're twelve, uh, no thanks. Go back to school and finish and get your diploma, and then go you know, go home and be a family. Man. <laughs> go home and go home and be a be a family. Multiply. You know. Uh, Essentially, just reproduce. bud. Reproduce by budding. But anyway, uh, that's for, so. Speaking of that. The recent game, Blade Blue Cross Tide Battle, is going to have two guest characters in the form of uh, Asta and Yumi. Asta's the Frog Ninja Girl. Okay. And Yumi's the... Yeah, the one with the... The one with... Who, like, I have a neckerchief now. Yeah. Yeah. And Yumi's one of the new characters that appeared in Estival versus. Okay, cool. She's the... She has the gray hair with the blue eyes. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I know which one you're talking okay. about. She's the, one, she's, she's the one with the fans, right? Yeah. Okay. They're guest characters for Blaze Blue. Now. Oh, cool. So that's cool. Speaking of... Why don't you like Blaze Blue, Lichen? I like Blaze Blue. I just don't like playing it. Why don't you want to learn Blaze Blue, Lichen? Because I don't have the game at home. <laughs> what more do you want from me? Why don't you... What if I got you the PC version? <laughs> My computer can't handle that bullshit. Yeah, can. It can barely handle Skullgirls. Turn on... You... And, okay. Fight... The cool thing about fighting games... That I liked about on PC is the fact that these things can almost run on anything. Okay. Like, te- like if you turn down Tekken Seven's like graphics to like potato, <laughs> the game will run perfect. <laughs> you, you make it run at like PS One Tekken One graphics. I want potato Tekken. I, if you can make it where you can turn down the graphics so card, so it looks like PS One. <laughs> no, no. Follow me on this. If you can turn on the graphics card so low, where it literally goes from like, all right, really cool details to not so good, 
to PS2, the PS1, everything's blocking graphics. It's like fucking, this fucking looks like Virtual Fighter to like wow, this is actually this to be, to good again because this is just a sprite down to holy shit, the lowest level is literally superimposes a fucking <laughs> potato. No, no, follow me on this. The, f- the, the lowest level fucking changes the graphics card and superimposes a potato. An actual photograph of a potato. And you have entire... <laughs> <laughs> the arms and legs are made up of the same photograph of the potato that form limbs. So you just see like a potato arm, which is the same potato. And you just go, poo, poo, poo. All the and all the like uh, all, all like the the hit uh, effects, the little like the little yeah yeah are just tiny potatoes. <laughs> and the background is like a potato too. <laughs> it's superimposed <laughs> over uh, like a potato like, field. That reminds you of the uh, of the mod for Majora's Mask, where everything <laughs> is Nicolas Cage. Ah, I've seen that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, if you like, can I'll, do that, then I'll play that version. Honestly, like you can probably get Skullgirls running better. Like it run, runs. I better have than Skullgirls, and I play it. One sometimes, and it makes me sad. Why does it make you sad? Because it look, man. Like I like, I appreciate and admire people who can pull off great combos, but my hands don't work that way. And it's just like I get, I get, I get some of them off, and but it just, man. Like you just go online and like you can't really find people your skill level, so you just end up fighting people who are b- way better than you, and it's just depressing. Sadly, sadly Skull Girls. <sighs> Stordor's learning curve is super steep because the tutorial sucks. Yeah, they're bad. And here's the thing, Mighty's like, you guys don't understand. It's me. You're like, what do you mean it's not made for beginners? The tutorial's good. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not. Also, I just love, I love the fact that like, if you mention any other game in Shilling, Mighty's like, why don't you sell my game? I'm like, guy. <laughs> One of the comments is like, hey, why don't you show a game like mine where it's made by a team of small people? Like, and the guy just responded. Man, I'm trying to get people into fighting games. I'm trying to make them quit. Yeah. Oh, I like and that. And my Z blocked them. That, that's fair. Is it fair that my Z blocked them or how he told them? Um. Well, Mike's just gonna be a little punk, a little punk ass, a little punk ass about it. Then yeah. But anyway, go on. What do you hate? What are your three? What are your least favorite characters from Blaze Blue? You know what they are, Tab. But I want you to explain to everybody. On, okay, on number record. one. And this, okay, this has nothing to do with um, fucking their play style because I think all of them play pretty well, and I played all of them, and they're all very interesting and very cool. I like the butler that turns into a goddamn dogman. That's cool. They just, put, they just put you in the game. I'm not a butler. I never worked as one. Maybe that's older me. Maybe it's a vision of the future I don't know about. Um, <clears throat> but, okay. So, my th- least favorite characters comes from a simply design, character design standpoint, okay? Number one, Makoto. The fuck is this? Okay? Seriously, guys. It's have a tube top. I know. It's like the worst outfit. And, like, it... I... There's nothing more than I hate in this world than, like, like designing a character, purposely making a character, not that is meant to be, like, meant to be super, like, sexy and revealing and have the giant, fattest titties, and then also making her, like, this badass brawler who's like, I don't get clothes! It's just like, why the fuck then? Just make her a big furry squirrel person in that case, with no tits. Oh, no, that's furries! You monsters! But Pabul, it's the same way too. I, I'm getting there, Tab. Oh. Okay. Like, everything about Makoto is cool. I just wish her character design was better. You know, she can have giant breasts if you want to draw them on her. But th- you don't have to, though. You don't have to, like... You can do them, you can... Ah, it's just frustrating. Because it's like, a character this badass shouldn't have to be, like... Shouldn't have to look this way, man. She could look way cooler. Which is the problem with Bullet. Number two, <laughs> Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> okay. She's the Burger King foot lettuce of characters, okay? <laughs> That's your most favorite. <laughs> Look, Bullet almost looks cool, ex- uh, except for the fact that she her shorts are like the worst. Hot pants. No, they're torn. They're like the worst torn. Like, I, look, I've seen a lot of torn jeans, okay? They always look tacky and bad. 
There's never a situation where cut-off je- jean shorts look good. Because they always look bad. Because you've just got denim riding into those cracks. Okay? You don't want denim riding into your crannies. It's uncomfortable, ladies. And men. But when you have it that way and you have so much leftover thread that it's like squeezing your buttocks, it's too much. Too much cut off circulation. No wonder she looks mad all the time. She's uncomfortable. Just buy a pair of bike shorts, lady. Funny enough, uh, there were some early designs. Where, like, well, she had them. No, also, oh. there was early designs of her wearing like uh, one of the, one of the NPCs of like one of the Todd girls is they've been dubbed. Yeah, actually has like her old early design bottom, which was like a big poofy pant leg, and the other side being kind of exposed. Why? But it didn't really work out for the character because it looked weird. Yeah, exactly. But it works out. But it looks cool on like one of the on the Condra, on the Condra ladies NPCs. I'll show you in a sec. But anyway. Okay, and the other problem with with Bullet's design is like, okay, again, another example of like, let me get like the biggest, let me get somebody who's like a giant bruiser, but also to denote that she's like a big heavy hitter, she's got to have big titties. Because that's a thing in like anime fighters, apparently. If a character is like a big like power character in this female, she's got to have large breasts to denote that. Because how else is she going to show off how strong she is by carrying around her heavy chest? Oof. Which is dumb. Just make her a big, strong lady, like the like their te- like the teacher in in Seven Kagura. Mm-hmm. But anyways, the part of the problem with with that with Bullet is that she's got this dumb dress shirt on. She's got this dumb it's dress a uniform. I know, but it's dumb. It's like, it's like, look, is your uniform literally a dress shirt, a black jacket, and ripped up jean shorts? What? Is- did, did somebody just vomit what was in their closet? <laughs> no, does that how that's how everybody in their old squad got dressed? It's b- b- and old, the men? Yeah, not the not, not the cut off jean shorts. Then the men should wear the cut off jean shorts too. It's got to be fair. Well, okay, in the lore. <laughs> I don't give a shit about the, in lore, the lore. Okay, here's, here's what happened. Just the reason why she's going after Tater and Azrael because first of all, Azrael just like what happened to Kisaragi, Azrael mm-hmm. pretty much killed her old platoon. And then they felt, because Tater was her original No, captain. no, I, okay, no. The question is, what is it in the lore? I don't need to know the exact hows and whys. I just she doesn't like pants. She needs more mobility. But she doesn't need more mobility up in her upper body area? It's stretchy. <laughs> that is some bullshit. I hate that. <laughs> Again, why Bullet is the second most hated character. Third most hated character. Um, no, the other ones are fine, actually. Um, I, I don't really have a problem with any other I mean like Rachel's fine she's like this little kid who's a vampire she's kind of cool um, Platinum which one's Platinum? the, the magical girl with the staff she's cool I, she's she's a good troll character I almost want to say Taukaka but her personality kind of matches whatever's going on with her so she's fine but what do you think about Ragman Blood Guy? The main character. It's just thing. Like, all the other characters are fine. Like, Lychee's the only one who pulls off the sexy outfit. That's her whole character. Yeah, exactly. All right, but what do you think about the sexiest guy characters in the game? They're all great. But, but who are... But who's the, who's your... Uh... Who's the who's the really swole one with the long... Be- who's the one who looks like Jason Momoa could play him in a movie? The one who has, like, an open shirt and is, like, a wrestler, kind of. Uh... He's the one who fights the one with the skateboard sword. Oh, Azrael. Yeah, that's the boy. <laughs> You're right. Jason, Jason <laughs> Momoa, the 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 Blaze Blue character. But what about the ninja with the uh, with like the with the shirt? No, well, ah, uh, he's great too. He's my boy too. Taker's my boy. All all the boys are my boys, especially the butler. Uh, the butler is a uh... Ragnar. Is just what is just. Uh, it looks like he's a misplaced fan of Final Fantasy. Or, he looks like a misplaced Square Enix character. What about his brother Jin? Same thing. What about uh, what about characters? Like They're all just worse versions. I mean, those two are just worse versions of better of better guilty gear characters. Like Kai and Soul. Kai and Soul are so good. Speaking of, that's this is the third question. Guilty Gear favorite characters, least favorite characters. Favorite character on Guilty Gear. Mm. I already know what you're gonna say. Mm. Zappa. Yeah. Because he's he's my boy. This app is my boy. He's my son. Also, you can go from worst character to the best character. <laughs> That's exactly why he's my son. 
<laughs> yes, he could go really bad to really good and then snap my fingers. Wow. One doesn't consider fun when playing Zappa, but this puts a smile on my face. <laughs> oh, worst character. Um, ooh, uh, none of the old characters are. None of the characters from like the previous games are bad, in my opinion. New, uh, you can even count new game stuff too. Okay, uh, I think in the new ones. No, uh, the one with the giant coat's pretty cool. Um, I guess worse might have to be just the character, the character updates on some of the, on some of the older characters. I complained about Biken and her boob job she got. They were already big guys, but I, I think it's just because of like the character model, like the, the, the game engine. I think it's just like they can't do, they can't do what a, a, a sprite work can do, which is like, you know. Um, also, I think just to show off the graphics too. Yeah, it's to show off the graphics too, but it's like it does like it just. It, it's kind of like it's it's sort of why I you, you I kind of miss, like sprite work be, like like you know sprite artwork because you could just draw something and put all that you know care and attention to animating it, you know and like they did with the, but like instead of like just I mean that's been a lot of people's problem with lacrosse tat with like cross tat which is like. They're like, you got this engine for for, for uh, Dragon Ball and Yielded Gear. Why not just use that? I'm like, but there's a charm to like how it looks. People are like, this game's uh, this game's pretty lazy when it comes to looks. I'm like, guys, but this is the charm of how it's supposed to look. That's the thing. Is like, I mean, it works for some characters, and it's weird that like they can get some like they can kind of make uh, some differences with like the bodies. I think if they didn't bring in some of the other characters, first in, of all, Soul is. Soul is swole. Yeah, okay, they okay. Some of the like really buff bodies they pick for the guys look pretty good. Um, I think Johnny maybe looks too swole in my opinion. What about Soul? Remember, he's kind of be like he's, like he's always been that huge, so that's fine with me. But like Johnny, Kai, Kai didn't change. Kai didn't change because, but then again, he's also got like a, a, he's fully clothed. What do you think, what, what Johnny you think? looks too swole in my opinion. What about Potemkin's new design? I where he looks like a Star Girls character. I'm not, I'll admit. I kind of like his old design where he was this big shirtless Russian guy with like a, with a, a neck, juggernaut thing. with a juggernaut neck brace, um, and not this Skullgirls character they poured it over. Um, what do you think? What do you think about the? Uh, I think I, I think about the new additions like Bed, <clears throat> Bedmanson, Elfel, Ramlethal. I was gonna talk. So Ramlethal doesn't bother me. Like you'd think, like because I don't know. I think I think she works. Uh, Elfel's pretty cool. Um, you you didn't like her updated design? I kind of didn't because it's I don't know it looks, I I mean it makes sense for the story but it's like uh, I don't know like it's just I don't know Ram like Elfo's like a character who's just like I'm 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 on the fence of like do I like this character or do I hate this character in design also like I don't know I, like it, it, she's kind of annoying too but I mean which is kind of why I like Ramathal a little bit more. Um, but also some characters kind of don't work with this, like, that weird, with that female character model. Like, again, Biken. Two, when they brought in Dizzy, it's like, oh, her boobs are never that big. Well, Amelia. Because they, they should have, like, just, like, updated Amelia's design. They did, and... They gave her a license plate on her forehead. On her they also give her pants. Yeah. Which is fine. I, I, that's but, well, but the leotard. Well, so, well, some colors don't have the, don't have the pants. Yeah. the leggings. Well, I, I don't know. It's just I, I think she's fine. I I think the hat is too. I think the hat is dumb. <laughs> Honestly, I think the hat is really dumb, and I think she probably thinks the hat is dumb too. I think Melia deep down hates the stupid license plate hat. Uh, but what is about, Ven, wait, is Venom in it again? Yeah, Venom's, yeah. Venom's been in it. Yeah. Oh, also, you're right. You're right. You're right. Also, Venom is pre- Venom's pretty iconic because the fact that he's the, he is one of the fir- he is the he is Doctor Year's only gay character. Kind of sad. Um, you think May would be gay? No, May loves Johnny. Everybody knows that. Okay, there's a line <laughs> that makes that bothers me a lot, <laughs> and it's when um, Faust does his concho thing. Um, okay, there's two weird lines that bother me. Uh, one is like, one is uh, Elfelt's when she gets conchoed, she goes, Woo-hoo-hoo. "No, that was Eno." No, Elfelt does it too. But you liked it when Eno does it. Cause she likes it, and she's a sex monster. Also, you know was pre- you know was pretty well done in terms of like bringing over the new uh, the new style of the game. Yeah. Or like Biken got like a boob job. You know stayed 
pretty the same. Yeah. Um, the other one that's bad is uh, May. Her reaction to getting conchoed is, I'm sorry, Johnny. Were you, were you trying to say that she was saving herself for Johnny? I don't like where this is going. Well, and, well Amelia's like, not there. That's funny. Uh, all the other ones are just funny to me. Ramothal's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's all I can say about Oh, oh uh, Jam's is really funny, too. Oh, that's right. Okay, Jam is... Okay, I hate... This is kind of a result of... Of, like, porting over um, her look from the old games to the new ones. I like Jam a lot. I just... Re- I, but it also reminded me, like, oh, wait. Jam has, like, a skin-tight shirt. And, like, she's got the dumb anime breast socks. <laughs> and Which always looks bad. I don't care who you are. It looks bad and uncomfortable. Ugh. It's up there with with Chun's boob jiggle in the first in the first release of SF five of SF five. It's Ugh. uncomfortable and bad. It's like no, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be stopped. But uh, uh, Jam, uh, see, I like the fact that like Jam's supposed to be sexy, but every time there's a close up her face, they intentionally make it make her look not as. For example, yeah. when for example, like, easily could have done something for like. Jam when uh when Faust does her thing to her, but instead they give her like this manly face. I know. Biting does the same thing too. Yeah. Um. Okay. And, uh, fourth question. Or is this the th- fifth one? Oh, for uh, yeah. Let's do, uh, let's do fifth. All right. Um. How do you say? How do you feel about a anime Tavi radio? I watch it. Just make sure it's not bad. It's gonna be done by uh, Toy Animation. Okay. In like early Dragon Ball Super Star, because I watched yeah. the hell out of it. <laughs> wow, Tav, some great animation. Tav looks. Wait, they just chased over Dragon. Wait a minute, they hired that they hired uh, the that, tracer guy. Yeah, I, I got Master Armida to do the anime version of this, and we're just chasing over episodes of Dragon Ball Super, honestly. So you you made amends with him, huh? Yeah, you know. He said he would do it for free, as long as I stopped talking bad about him. Yeah, you know that works out for me personally. I'm yeah. not trying. To, I'm not trying to beef with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Except when we are. Because who's going to be listening to this? Only the lo- true and honest fans. Yeah, you know. Huh. That's why the Saber has a really deep widow's peak now. <laughs> that's weird. Why is Turbo green? Oh, no. No. He just paints over Piccolo with pink. Huh. Turbo's looking taller than usual. <laughs> and why is he stretching his limbs? <laughs> it's, I thought all pigs could do that. No. <laughs> Um, huh, that's weird. How come I, how come I have, don't have eyebrows anymore? <laughs> and really heavy, thick brow muscles. It's so weird. <laughs> Super Saiyan 3 is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> don't you look like a caveman? <laughs> well, with that hairstyle, why not? It's so, hold on. He's, he's Jade Steel. <laughs> that's, that's why Bobby was so scared. He turned into Jade Steel. He was in a yabba dabba boo. <laughs> Yeah, but Yeah, Yeah, Somebody <laughs> said that made Fred Flintstone going Super Saiyan after Barney steals his, his, his cocoa, his fruity pebbles, and then have both of them do Super Saiyan and then start playing <laughs> this, uh, the, the battle scene from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Scrappy, do you want to be a good guy? Take uh, take take uh, Saiyan Soldier Goku versus Vegeta and just put. Bar- yes, please. Yes, please. For- it's over, Fred. <laughs> I get the Cocoa Pebbles now. <laughs> it, they turn. Wait, 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 wait. Would Fred be Vegeta? Or be no, him? Barney's Vegeta. He's yeah, exactly. Not. Like another scene where like uh, Vegeta goes up in the air and does Gallic Gun. <laughs> yes. That's it. It's over, Fred. I get the Cocoa <laughs> Pebbles now. Barney. <laughs> I need more. I need to access more pebbles. It's fucking you know. It shows up and cuts off Barney's tail. <laughs> if, no, it would be funnier. Um, superpose Dino over Yajirobe or superpose Mr. Slate. Mr. Slate. <laughs> Mr. Slate. Fred, you're late for work. Oh, oh Fred. Wait, would that so? Would Pebbles and Bam Bam be, uh... Trunks and, jo- Trunks and Johan, I guess. I guess, uh, uh, That's weird. 
Oh, Pebble, Pebbles is gold. Who would be Who would be Piccolo in that? Uh, the Great Gazoo. They both green. Oh, and well, well, it looks like Dum Dum. You've left You left your child to to for me to take care of. You know, nobody in who listens to this podcast is old enough to know what the fuck we're talking about. Oh, Total Pebble, Total Pebbles commercial still play. The no, but I'm talking about like, do you think they know who the Great Gazoo is? No, they unless they watch the <laughs> or Mr. Also, Slate. <laughs> unless they watch the John Candy uh, version because uh, of, uh, of the Flintstones movies. Because in one of them, uh, the Great Gazoo does appear. Oh in my the, god, the, uh, Alan! I think Alan Cumming played the Great Gazoo. Yeah. Dum 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 dums. Get out of here, Gazoo. I just I just pictured this whole like Barney going, That's it, Fred. These cocoa pebbles are mine. And if you Fred, if you don't dodge this if you don't dodge this del- the, my gallon gun What would he call it? Uh my granite gun. If you don't dodge my granite gun, Fred, then these cocoa pebbles will be mine. Oh no, I got I gotta power up against Barn. <laughs> People of bedrock! Lend me your, your wait, strength. Who'd, wait, who'd be Frieza? <sighs> Mr. Slate. <laughs> Mr. Slate. Uh, or Cary Grant. <laughs> All the stupid celebrities that got rock pun names. Cary Grant. Uh, I can't. Oh, man, I can't wait for the perfect Velma saga. <laughs> oh, shit. They cross over with Scooby-Doo. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey. hey. Beautiful Dwayne, your next series after this, a Hanna Barbera version of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, do that. We got we, Barney's Vegeta, Fred as uh, Goku, and okay, because we got the Hanna Barbera characters. Who would be the who would be the rest of the cast? Just in Hanna Barbera in general. Why don't we just make a Flintstones version of Dragon Ball Z? Make it one season, make it only the same saga, okay, and then do fair. Flintstones babies as Dragon Ball. Okay. That's fair. There you go. Yeah. All right. No, sorry. It's Flintstones kids. I'm thinking of Muppet Babies. It's part of that phase where everybody had like a baby or kid version of them. It's Pop Lane Scooby Doo, Muppet Babies, Tav. When are you gonna do uh, Tavi Radio Kid Edition? Never. Oh. I thought kids already listened to this. Uh, oh. Yeah, we got those. Uh... You got those kids up, up above listening to us. Speaking of, you're the captain of this boat now. I kind of threw him off the ship. That's where you're wearing the hat. You got you got to pilot this boat. We're okay, going. we better end this podcast now, huh? Oh yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. I've been Lycan Captain Lycan Jones. I've been Tiberius. And C. You wouldn't want to be. On behalf of the staff and management of Jack Television, we hope you have enjoyed our evening programming and that you will be able to join us again tomorrow.